Hi, and welcome back. In this video, we're going to talk about function notation and how it's used with tables. So we'll talk about function notation using graphs later, and we're gonna focus on tables for this video. So when we're using functions, we have a specific function notation that we use. This is a way we write functions mathematically in order to understand what's going on with them. So the general way we do this is if we have a function f, we would write f of our input value is equal to the output value. So f is the name of our function, and then we use parentheses to indicate that we're giving it an input, and then it's equal to whatever the output is. Another way to write this is that f takes the input and maps it to the output. So we would use f and then a colon, and then we would say the input gets mapped to, that's that arrow with the line, is mapped to the output. This is just to show that the function takes the input and provides us the corresponding output. This is why it's so important that there is only one output for every input. The function needs to know which output goes with the input. You can imagine a function to be like a vending machine. If you told the vending machine a certain number that you wanted an item from, you'd be really annoyed if that number corresponded to two different things and you didn't know which one you were gonna get. Maybe one number is a soda and another number is a candy bar, but you really want a candy bar, how do you make sure you get it? So a function is well-defined, it works well, and so we want it to work like a vending machine where you give it an input and it has only one output that comes with it. So in the cases where we have x as the input and y as the output, we can rewrite these statements as f of x equals y, and again we read this as f of x equals y, or we can have f maps x to y. And again, we read this f maps x to y. So I'm reading out the symbols that I'm writing here, and so just know that those symbols represent these words, and if you're looking at the notes later, it might be nice to know how you would say these out loud. So let's practice using this function notation. For this example, let's answer some questions using this table. So we have an x column and a y column. This is a relation. We have negative 3, 5, 0, 7, 2, negative 1, 4, 5, and 7, 0. Then let's consider this table as a function, f of x equals y. So x is the input and y is the output. And let's find the following information. Let's find f of 0, let's find f of 2, and let's determine for what values of x is f of x equal to 0, and for what values of x is f of x equal to 5. Okay, so this is our function notation, this f of something, and we're going to use the table to answer all these questions. So since we have f of x equals y, we've determined the function f takes an input x and provides an output y, we can relabel the second column as f of x, since y is equal to f of x. So our columns are really like x and f of x. Okay, so let's start with finding f of 0. With our function notation, 0 is our input or our x value, so we can find 0 in the input column and then look for the corresponding output value. So f takes 0 and outputs 7. This means f of 0 is equal to 7. So 7 would be our answer. All right, now we do the same thing for f of 2. 2 is an input, it's an x value, and we see it corresponds with the output negative 1. So f takes the input 2 and provides the output negative 1, and so f of 2 is equal to negative 1, and negative 1 is our solution. Okay, so these ones we were given an input and we had to find the corresponding output. Now these other problems are gonna go the other direction. So when it says for what values of x is f of x equal to zero, this is asking us for x values as our solution and it's giving us the y values. So it's saying f of x is equal to zero. Zero is our output or our y value. So I'm gonna look for zero in the y column. I see that this corresponds to seven as an input and so my solution is seven. This is because f of seven is equal to zero. When I give the function seven, it outputs zero, and so seven is the solution to f of x equals zero. Okay, we repeat this again. We say, for what values of x is f of x equal to five? 
So here, five is a Y value or an output. I'm noticing that it shows up twice. So we have five listed twice. And so this means we're gonna have two solutions since both negative three and four map to five. So we would say negative three and four, and that's because F of negative three equals five and F of four equals five. So although each input has only one output, we can have output values showing up more than once. So we had two output values of five and they came from different inputs. In the vending machine analogy, this would be like having the same candy bar in multiple locations and having different numbers or inputs to the vending machine that would give you that same candy bar. So that's fine, we just don't want the same input corresponding to multiple outputs. So we can feel okay and confident that we had two solutions to this part of the problem. All right, so that's it for this example, and this is the end of our video about function notation with tables. Thanks so much for watching, and I will talk to you in the next one.